This video shows the application of high interaction dynamic graphical methods to the exploration and analysis of customer panel data. It includes three examples of the analysis of residential telephone usage data. The tape accompanies a paper by the same name. To obtain a copy of the paper, use one of the telephone numbers or electronic mail addresses now on the screen. Customer panel data are, char are characterized by a cross-sectional element and a longitudinal element, meaning that for different customers, relevant information is collected over time. In the following examples, customers are residential telephone customers or customer households. The relevant information collected consists of all the telephone calls they make. The rest of the video has four parts. A brief introduction to XGOBI, the software used throughout the video, followed by three examples that we encountered in the course of several marketing studies. XGOBI is interactive dynamic graphics software that has been written at Belcor in the course of research on graphical methods for data analysis. This is an XGOBI window. At the center of the XGOBI window is the plotting window, which always contains some two-dimensional projection of the data. The plot is always a scatter plot. The row of buttons above the plotting window is called the main control panel. The leftmost buttons of the main control panel, from dot plot to line edit, correspond to groups of similar graphical methods. We select one of these buttons by positioning the cursor and pressing a mouse button. We are about to select brush. The control panel associated with brushing is now displayed to the left of the plotting window. At the right of the plotting window is the variable selection panel. Each of these labeled circles is associated with one variable. As we click on a variable circle using the mouse, we select that variable for plotting. Its label is highlighted as the new plot appears in the main window. The lines displayed in the variable circles are smaller representations of the axes in the plot window. The size and aspect ratio of the whole XGOBI window can be adjusted, and so can its layout. In the following three examples, you will see many of XGOBI's methods in action. However, in this tape, we focus more on the data analysis than on explaining the graphical methods. For more detailed descriptions of the methods, communicate with the people listed at the beginning of the video. The data in the first example are based on telephone usage records for about 14,000 residential customers in a single urban area for one year. These data were collected in order to study usage patterns. The main objective of this study is to understand how hourly demand for telephone service changes over time. In addition, we will check data integrity. In order to view these data, we've broken up the raw time series into 52 shorter series, one for each week of the year. These 52 series now become 52 variables, identified by the date of the first day of each week. We add one additional variable, an indicator variable for the 168 hours in a week. There are then 53 variable circles in XGOBI's variable selection panel. In the plotting window, we're looking at a plot of a single week's worth of telephone usage. The horizontal axis is the number of hours in a week, from 1 to 168. The vertical axis is the number of telephone calls in thousands. Just now, we're looking at the time series of hourly usage during the week beginning Wednesday, January 8th. In this plot, the default scaling is used, and we can't see much structure in the data. We'll move the cursor up to the main control panel and select the Scale button. Now we can use the mouse to reshape this plot in real time. The structure of the time series is now much clearer. To make the shape even easier to see, we'll bring up a menu of options and select an option for adding connected line segments to the plot. We can now clearly see some patterns in the data. We see seven distinct peaks and valleys in usage, which must correspond to the seven days of the week. 
In order to explore this plot further, we select Identify from the main control panel. As we move the cursor in the plotting window, the point nearest to the cursor is labeled. Here's the number of telephone calls made on Friday between 4 and 5 in the evening. In general, the number of calls, the largest number of calls, seems to be made in the early evening. There are also some day of week patterns. During the working days, the afternoon usage levels are much higher than the morning levels, while for Saturday and Sunday, the morning and afternoon usage levels seem to be more similar. What about other weeks? By clicking on one of the variable circles, we can look at plots for any week we're interested in. Here's the usage for the week beginning with July 9th. For several days, there seems to be no usage. These zeros actually represent missing data. Also notice that the shape of the working days has changed. The morning and afternoon usage levels are not so different anymore. We see the same pattern in the following week. To investigate the dynamics for a specific hour of the day, we will use an additional plot called the case profile plot. Going back to the week starting January 8th, we first select scale again and zoom in on Wednesday and Thursday. Next, we return to the identification mode and bring up the case profile window. We move the cursor next to 5 o'clock. The case profile plot now shows a plot of the number of telephone calls in thousands made on Wednesday between 4 and 5 in the evening for each of the 52 weeks of the study period. The zeros indicate missing values, a problem that we already noted. Other than the zeros, usage for that hour is pretty constant throughout the year. How does this usage profile change with the hour of the day? To answer this question, we'll make the first label permanent and then move to an earlier hour, 1 to 2 in the afternoon. The case profile plot now contains the usage profile for this time period also. The lower curve shows the calls made between 1 and 2 on each Wednesday afternoon of the year. For this hour, usage increases substantially between about weeks 21 and 37. These weeks fall during the summer when public school is out of session. To confirm that this isn't just some oddity that occurs only on Wednesdays, we add the profiles for Thursday to the case profile window. Indeed, the 2 o'clock Thursday time series falls right on top of the 2 o'clock Wednesday series, and the 5 o'clock Thursday time series is quite close to the Wednesday series. In this example, we used scaling, identification, and case profile plots as well as the ability to easily select different plots to explore time of day, day of week, and seasonal patterns. We also uncovered an interaction between time of day and season. The data in example two are based on telephone records for 375 residential customers that formed the control group in an advertising effectiveness study. For each customer, we have a time series of weekly telephone usage corresponding to the 51 weeks of the trial. Again, usage is measured by the number of calls made. The main objectives of the analysis are to gain an understanding of basic usage characteristics and to identify unusual customers. In addition, we will check data integrity. Conceptually, we treat each customer's usage time series as a data point in 51-dimensional space. We investigate this data by looking at selected two-dimensional projections. The simplest projections are plots of usage during one week against usage during another. Each of the 51 weeks now corresponds to a variable in XGOBI. The main plotting window shows each customer's usage during week two plotted against usage in week one. Each point in the plot corresponds to one customer, and we note that the two heaviest users made more than 200 calls in a week. Notice that the points are heavily clustered in the left lower corner of the plot. This suggests the need for a transformation. It is an empirical law of telephony that a power transformation close to the fourth root can transform usage data at the customer level to near normality. We move the cursor to the variable label for week one 
and click to bring up a menu of variable transformations. We select the fourth root transformation. The variables were previously grouped so that transforming one variable transforms them all. The power transformation appears to have been successful. The points are much better spread out. There is strong correlation between the transformed usage levels for these two weeks. As the lag between weeks increases, this correlation becomes slightly weaker, but persists nevertheless. We see this by comparing week 1 to week 19 and then week 46. This observation suggests a reorientation of the coordinate system in our 51-dimensional data space such that the first few coordinate axes lie in the directions of largest variation in the data. In other words, we perform a principal components analysis. We have initiated a new XCOBY window using the principal components of the transformed usage data. The plotting window shows the second principal component plotted against the first. Since the first principal component spans a considerably wider range than the second, as we can see by looking at the axis ranges, it also explains much more of the variation. Each data point still corresponds to one customer household. To investigate individual customers, we select the Identify function. Also, we bring the Case Profile window into view. For this data, the Case Profile window shows the untransformed usage time series for a single customer. Bringing the cursor next to a data point identifies it as belonging to customer 226. The case profile window now contains this customer's usage time series over the course of 51 weeks. We note that this customer usually makes between 100 and 300 calls a week. We are now in a position to see how we might interpret the first principal component. As we move the cursor from right to left, we note a monotonic decrease in customer's usage volume. We tentatively conclude that the first principal component captures customer's average usage level. This interpretation is consistent with the conclusion gained from inspecting the first eigenvector of the cross products matrix. We could go on to explore other principal components in the same way. At the moment, though, we would like to take a look at some unusual points. We move the cursor to identify one of these points, customer 166. This customer's usage profile shows a drop in usage from about 200 calls a week to a mere 30 calls a week. It is very unlikely that this change is due to the telephone company's marketing activities. This next customer, customer 88, shows a steady decrease in usage from a high usage level, about 150 calls a week, to a very low level, with no calls at all made during the last few weeks of the study period. Since this calling behavior is most certainly not attributable to the presence or absence of advertising, these customers should probably be marked for further analysis. We will mark them graphically using the brush facility. We select the brush button in the main control panel. The brush is represented by the blue rectangle you see in the plotting window. We move the brush over the unusual points just noted, and in this way we change their size and color. These points will continue to be marked as we proceed in our investigation. We marked two other customers whose usage patterns also show large decreases over the study period. To look for more unusual customers, we could look at other pairwise plots of principal components. Instead, we'll use rotation to add the third principal component to the first two already shown. We have selected rotation in the main control panel. Initially, the third principal component axis is perpendicular to the viewing plane. The data can be thought of as suspended in a transparent sphere that can be rotated using the cursor. As we rotate the data and bring the third principal component into the viewing plane, we note additional unusual customers. Using the identify function again, we see that customer 293 certainly has an unusual usage time series. For a period of more than 15 weeks, this customer made no phone calls at all. This could be a reflection of unusual calling behavior of a single customer, or it could be a case where one telephone number was reassigned and over the course of the study period was used by two different customers. Again, this is a customer record that should be marked and set aside for further study.
In the second example, in addition to the graphical methods used in the first example, we used variable transformation, brushing, and rotation. We investigated the meaning of one of the principal components, and we identified and marked several unusual customers. The data in example three are based on telephone records for 438 residential customers that were part of the control group in an advertising effectiveness study. For each customer, we have a time series of weekly intralata telephone usage corresponding to the 52 weeks of the trial. As in the other examples, usage is measured by the number of calls made. The objectives are the same as in example two, to understand usage characteristics identify and mark unusual customers, and in the process, to check data integrity. The first few steps of this analysis are very similar to the steps that we took in example two and will not be shown here. Instead, we start with the principal components view of the transformed usage data. As before, the first principal component captures considerably more variation than the others. Also, there seem to be outliers that could be investigated using the identify function. Instead, we will look at the gestalt or overall shape of the point cloud in the space spanned by the first five principal components. We select the tour button in the main panel. This allows us to perform rotations of more than three variables. We add the fourth and fifth principal components. Rather than controlling the rotation manually, as we did in example two, we will use an algorithm, a method called projection pursuit, to steer the rotation toward interesting views. We select projection pursuit and then position the projection pursuit window. This window plots the projection pursuit index over the course of the search. This index is some measure of how interesting the current view is. More detail about the technique can be found in the paper. Now we initiate the search. We watch the steady increase in this index as the view in the main plotting window changes. Now the index is reaching a maximum. We turn our attention back to the view in the main plotting window and see that projection pursuit has led us to a distinctly V-shaped view. We'd like to find out whether this structure corresponds to a difference in usage behavior. After some sleuthing, we found an explanation. It turns out that there are two groups of customers in our sample, customers whose phone numbers begin with 799 and those whose numbers begin with 797. We link this window to another XCOBE window, which is not shown, and we use linked brushing to highlight the customers whose telephone numbers begin with 797. Next, we highlight the customers whose numbers begin with 799. It certainly looks as though this division of the data accounts for the V-shaped structure. Further investigation revealed that the difference between these two customer groups could be explained by a systematic data collection error for one of the groups. The new methods demonstrated in example three were the projection pursuit guided tour and linked brushing. Using these methods, we found a systematic data collection error. We've shown that a set of basic graphical tools can be effectively combined to provide an analysis of considerable complexity. We hope it's clear that the application of these tools is not limited to the telephone usage product, nor is the analysis limited to customer panels. Rather, these techniques can be applied to wide product categories as well as to different panel structures.